Okay, getting ready for the star. Here we have TK A.2C, which is about writing linear equations. In this first problem, we have a word problem talking about a restaurant, and each box contains eight jars. We know eight, but we don't know how many boxes, so typically we're going to think that might be the variable, each box. Uh, so we'll write 8x, that's telling us that however many boxes we have, we multiply that times the eight jars that's in it. And then it tells us that a cook uses two jars from one of the boxes, so he would have to take away from those boxes two of the jars, so minus two. And to make an equation, we have the y equals at the beginning, so we can recognize c as the answer choice. In this next question, we have a graph. When we're comparing our answer choices in the graph, we typically start with whatever's the easiest to identify, and when it's given in y equals mx plus b, slope-intercept form, we check the y-intercept. But we don't have the y-intercept here, so probably the easiest thing is to take a look at the slopes so we can eliminate something here. Two of them are negative, two of them are positive. This line is going down, so we know it's a negative slope, so we can eliminate both of these positive slopes there. Uh, and the slope is down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. We don't even necessarily have to check the graph because it's the same slope, uh, but we can for sure see it's down 1, 2, 3 over 1, so it checks out as we suspected. The next thing we're going to check is the point. We can recognize from the way these two lines are written that it is point slope form. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. You could have seen that from your formula chart that you'll have on the star. So we're going to pull out the point. We already looked at the slope. We're going to pull out the point, the x and the y. Now we notice from the equation that it's supposed to be minus. So when we pull out, for example, this 4, it looks negative, but that's just the equation. The x is really positive. In the case of this 7, it's a plus, but it should have been a negative, So that I mean a minus, so that must mean it had to have been a negative 7 in order that when we did y minus negative 7, the two negatives would have turned it positive. So this point is 4, negative 7. And this other point, when we pull out a positive 2, it must really be a negative 2. And when we pull out a positive 1, it must be a negative 1. So let's check to see which one of these two points is on the line. x is 4, y is 7, over 4, down 7. That is on the line, so that must be the answer. Let's check the other one just for practice. Negative 2, negative 1. Back to down 1. That's definitely not on the line. A is the answer as we thought. Next question. We have another word problem. We see that it's talking about a glacier, and it is 450 meters when it first was discovered. So that would be a starting point, which might make us think that that's our B, our y-intercept. The thickness of the shell is decreasing at a rate, so we're talking about slope, of 0.06 per day. That's that slope word, per. So we've got an idea that it's a slope-intercept equation. Uh, we have a starting point, 450. It had that much, and it's decreasing. It's losing, so we put a minus at a rate of 0 0.06 per day. That means it has the variable next to it because it's repeating however many days times the decreasing rate. So we look at our answer choices, and we see that A is the correct answer. Next question, we have a table. Uh, just like we did on the other one, we can check the slopes. We have two slopes that are the same here and two here, so it's either 1 over 12 or 12 over 1. Let's check the table to see. So we have to see what it's growing by or changing by. Let's pull up the calculator here. We're figuring out from 268 to 196 what was the change. 268, 196, it changed by 72, and we think it was negative 268, and it went upwards to negative 196, it's getting closer to zero, so that means we must have added it, plus 72, 
And for our x's, it went from negative 20 to negative 14, closer to zero. It's getting more positive, so it's plus 6. And so we have, which, which one of those two numbers goes on top? Well, we know it's for slope, change in y over change in x. Change in y over change in x. So it should be 72 over 6, which is going to give us 12 over 1, or just 12. Uh, so we can automatically eliminate both of the answers that have the wrong slope. And as you can tell, that's just for students who put the 6 over the 12 uh, and messed up their slope. All right. Now we have to check between these two by comparing points, which of the points are correct. Uh, we know from the same formula, y minus y1 equals m, x minus x1. Our x value goes in the parentheses, so it's talking about 20 and 268. That's this first table value up here. The x value is 20, so it should have been y minus negative 20, turning it positive 20. And that matches here. It does not match here. So h is the answer. The other one, of course, would have been y plus 20, because it was minus negative 20. Uh, 268, I should say. And the slope we already had found as 12. Oh my goodness, why do I have a y written there? That's a mistake. Should have been an x there. All right, moving on to the next question. Same sort of deal. We have a table, and we're trying to find the uh, equation that matches. In this case, uh, they're in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b. So we can look and see. Look at that. All of the slopes are different. So once we find the slope here, we'll know immediately what the answer is. We figure out what it changes by. So we take a look from negative 7.5 to negative 3.5. It is getting closer to 0, so that was plus 4. And then from 12 to 0, it's going down negative. So it must have gone down 12. Which one of these two numbers go on top? We know slope is change in y over change in x. So the change in y is negative 12, and the change in x is 4. Negative 12 over positive 4 is negative 3. The answer is A. Next question is a word problem. Every month is 2070 spent on salaries. So it's being spent. That's the total amount. Uh, one fourth of what remains. So that must mean we had something to begin with and we got rid of. We had to spend. We had to take away 270. So something that we started with, take away the amount we had to pay out for salaries. And then it says one-fourth of what remains. So we could either put parentheses around it and divide by 4, whatever this is, divided by 4. Or it could be written in fraction form, whatever this is, divided into 4. One-fourth of what remains is built on that. What's the equation? And we can tell the answer is D in function notation. F of x is equal to what we've written down. All right, on this question, we have another word problem. It's talking about you have to pay $439 for California, and then you, you can check two pieces, but there's $25 for each additional piece on top of that. So two free, and then you pay $25 above that. Um, so what would the equation be? Well, we're not going to get away from having to pay the 439. That's a given. So that's just going to be written down, 439. It won't repeat like luggage. I'll have to bring more luggage. Every new piece of luggage, I pay extra. The ticket is already paid. So the X is going to go by the luggage. Uh, so normally, we would um, put the price that's going to be repeating. So $25 per piece of luggage plus the 439 for the flight. This would be our normal equation. But there's an extra piece here, the two free pieces. So we have to note that somehow. So it's not just $25 for every piece of luggage, this X. We get two of them for free. So how could we note that? Well, X being the number of luggage 
that we have minus two because I get two for free and whatever that is, that's what I'm going to pay the 25 fee on, not for the first two. So we can clean this up. It's $25 charge per every piece of luggage except for the first two, minus two, which are free. We can see that the answer would be B. All right, that is TK point to see.